okay guys let's get it started so we were discussing about what we were discussing about uh, the string manipulations so people who have missed extra day class don't worry uh, you know i'm going to repeat the same things but in a different way so the topic is string manipulations see uh, whenever you getting you are getting a question like uh, what is a string what is uh, mutability what is immutability you can answer you can answer to those questions very easily it is very easy to answer those questions but the problem will come when they ask you to guess the output of a particular program so if you get a question like what is what is a string anyone can say anyone anyone can say that string is a sequence of characters right and uh, you can also add something to the string what is that you can also say that string is available in java.lang package string is an inbuilt class inbuilt java class that is available in java.lang package this this is also you know easy to explain okay the third point string is immutable in nature okay so the follow up question will be what what is immutability theoretically you can answer what, what did i just say about immutable in the extra day's class extra day class i was saying that it cannot be changed if something is uh, you know if something cannot be changed you call it as what the immutable right so in the string once the object is created you cannot modify that object you cannot change that object you cannot change the content in the object but if you want to make any changes you can make the changes but the changes will be happen in the newly created object okay we will understand this once again today and for the string buffer okay just, it is just completely opposite to string when string is immutable in nature string word buffer is mutable in nature okay apart from this uh, you know uh, it is available in java.lang package the both points are similar and it is also a mutable sequence of characters okay the characters can be the uh, characters in the objects can be changed according to the requirement right so this is the theoretical part and we have also seen some problems on top of string manipulations okay today we will understand few cases so that you will get much better much comfortable with the string manipulations okay the first problem i want to introduce is the first case I have taken some examples. Okay. So let us take the example one. Okay, this could be your interview question, guys. So this question has been asked many number of times in the interview. Many number of times this question has been. Okay, so they give you this program and they ask you to guess the output of this program. Okay, so one program is on top of string, second program is on top of string buffer. We will understand line by line. We'll understand line by line okay the first line okay so this is about string okay we will understand line by line so let us focus on the first line okay first line is what uh, a string object is getting created okay so you when you see the new keyword whenever whenever you see the new keyword or whenever you see that string object is getting created with the new keyword usually for the strings you need to visualize two things visualize two things that are happening behind the scenes okay the memory areas what is what are they the memory areas so there are two areas in the memory one is the eap area second one is what the scp area scp stands for what string constant constant okay you have eap area and you have scp area and uh, when an, when an object is created by using the string okay when the, whenever you encounter the new keyword it performs two operation okay for the new keyword one object will be created for the new keyword one object will be created in the eap area and uh, this object will be addressed as what is going to have the reference variable as s1 okay sir guys one part is done okay what i was saying whenever you encounter this kind of instruction right so you need to imagine, you need to visualize two, two things that are going to happen behind the scenes. Okay, this is the second thing and there is also a first thing. Okay, first thing and second thing. Okay, first thing is this. Okay, as soon as uh, the object is getting created because of the new keyword, the data will be stored, the uh, literal will, string literal will be stored in this specific object. The second thing that is going to happen is the second thing that is going to happen is okay another object will be created in the scp area for the future purpose for the future purpose so java 
an object will be created inside this object the word java will be stored inside this object this is for the future reference so these are the things that we have discussed yesterday okay, first line is completed and again again uh, let us see the second line okay, what does the second line says second line is also the object creation right new keyword right new keyword means blindly go to the heap area and create an object right and what is the reference variable for this particular object the reference variable is what s2 right and uh, java will be stored here right one one part one operation is done okay every time whenever you encounter an instruction of object creation by using string okay you need to consider two things that is going to happen here in the scenes the first thing is object will be created in the heap area the second thing is the object will also be created in the scp area but object created object creation in the scp area is not at all mandatory if there is already an object with the value with the same value the new object will not be created right so already java is there so it is not going to create one more object and it is not going to place java inside this will not happen is going to utilize the existing object there is already an object of uh, you know which is which is storing the value java so this same object is going to be used so this this is what we call as what reusability okay now let's come to the question now let's come to the question okay, the third line the third line is what okay and uh, there is a system dot out on print line statement s1 is getting compared with s2 by double equal to operator right so s1 where is s1 here is s1 here is s2 so you are using what to do the comparison you are using double equal to operator to do the comparison okay this double equal to operator is meant for the reference comparison right s1 is a reference variable s2 is a reference variable both are pointing to the different objects or both are having the different references if both are having the different references the output has to be what false false is going to be the output right so third line is completed and the fourth line is what system dot out dot print line s1 dot equals s2 okay for this string for this string please remember the dot the equals method the equals method equals method is meant for content comparison what comparison content comparison so what we are trying to do it here we are trying to check if the content inside the s1 and the content in, inside the s2 is same or different okay now where is s1 s1 is here the content inside the s1 is java the content inside the s2 is also java content wise both are equal when it is equal content wise the output has to be what true that's it okay when you get a program like this right the double equal to operator people what they usually do you know people actually they think that the double equal to operator is also meant for content comparison they think like that and they say the output is true no no the output should not be true because the double equal to operator is meant for reference comparison it will compare the references not the content right by this i can conclude that you can answer you can answer what you know practically now you need to do some practice with pen and paper after uh, practicing few programs okay you can uh, just uh, answer it just by visualizing these things okay you got false and true okay first part in some so this is this part is all about what string string class okay now the second part okay we should also answer this question the second question okay what are pens okay what would be the output for this concept okay please always remember for this string there is a concept of heap memory there is a concept of scp memory these two memories are uh, you know this allowed only for string class this string class is going to utilize both heap as well as scp this concept is there only for string class but when it comes to string buffer string buffer has only one memory area for its storage because it will store only it will utilize only the heap area there is no concept of scp for the string buffer one difference 
okay i can i can uh, add this i can load this difference in our theory okay that is a concept of heap area and the scp area scp stands for string constant pool however we, we, for the string buffer there is only one concept okay uh, memory will be located only in the heap area there is no concept of scp area for the string buffer this is one of the differences that we must remember okay, only heap area is there what is the first line okay first line is object creation okay an object will be created and what is the reference variable reference variable is what s3 anyone with the eyes can say that the reference variable is s3 that is what we have given here what is the content inside java is the content because here we are passing java java is content right so first line is done first line is done second line because there is no concept of scp area in the string buffer that's why we are not uh, doing all these things in the string buffer okay and the second line is again the object creation is happening because of the new keyword an object will be created and you know this object has a reference variable of s4 and the content is tab okay now the billion dollar question what is the question s3 double equal to s4 okay just now i have said that s3 when double equal to operator is meant for what is meant for reference comparison right s3 is pointing to a different object s4 is also pointing to a different object so both are pointing to different object that's why this uh, uh, you know this this calculation is going to give us give false as an output right now now the question now you see now here you will be little confused okay for the string buffer the equals method equals method for the string buffer is also meant for the reference comparison or the address comparison not at all the content comparison okay for the string buffer okay if you want to elaborate this even for the uh, if you if you take the string as an example the equals method is meant for content comparison okay this is limited to only string because string class is designed in such a way that it is going to override the equals method which is meant for content comparison it is designed in such a way when you use equal methods here blindly it will check the content and will say true or false but same thing will not work for string buffer because for the string buffer both equal to operator okay double equal to operator or equals method both are meant for content com reference comparison only or address comparison so that's why if you see s3 dot equals s4 okay s3 is pointing to different object s4 is pointing to different object both are pointing to different objects so the output is what false false itself false false right so that's why when you see when you run this piece of code that is it when you run this piece of code okay the output is going to be what if you get a question like this interview so this is the actual meaning of uh, the content and the reference comparison so this is string buffer so they will ask you why this is uh, you know why the string classes string class is giving true here why string buffer is giving false here so the answer 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 to this question is very simple let me uh, introduce you that so we have an object class guys we know that right object class is the super class of all the classes so i have been telling you in the object class there are 11 methods okay and you have hash code method you have uh, you know two string method and you have also what equals method is also there in the object class okay so what it says is uh, the uh, the equals method that is placed inside the object class is designed in such a way that it is meant for it is meant for reference comparison only okay what did i just say object class is a super class of all the class so in our example our string class string is also a class string buffer is also a class 
internally they are a class then buffer is also a class so when object class is super class of all the classes so the string class and the string buffer class all the child classes to object classes so no? this has to be child classes to object class okay uh, I can write the okay, string is string class is extending to object class and string buffer is also extending to object class. Okay, when it is getting extended, all the behaviors of the parent class will apply for the child class also. Yes or no? So this equals method is one of the behavior. Equals method is one of the behavior that is that could that is inherited. Okay? That is inherited by string as well as that is inherited by string buffer. They both are initiating all the methods. Equals method is since we are discussing our discussion is on top of equals method. So this equals method is also inherited here. Okay, but what string is doing? String says, I don't like to follow the functionality of equals method. String says, I will not follow the functionality of equals method. Because this equals method is giving the functionality of uh, reference comparison, double equal to operator, I mean reference comparison. So string class has overridden the equals method in such a way that internally, it is changing the functionality of equals method in such a way that it is designing its own equal method by overriding it and uh, you know it has done some changes what are the changes that is it has done it changed in such a way that the string class equal method is overridden for content comparison whereas string buffer is not making any changes it is just blindly following the object class equals method just like that which is meant for the reference comparison Okay, what is the answer to you can give in enter your own? Okay, why the equals method is giving uh where is it? Why the equals method is giving true here? Okay, why the equals method? They will ask you this follow-up question. Why the equals method is giving false here? The answer is very simple. String class has overridden equals method for the content comparison. Okay. String buffer class does not overridden the equals method. That's why it follows the reference comparison. Reference comparison. Right. So this is one of the points that you can include for the differences between the string and the string buffer. Okay. What is the point that you have discussed? Fifth point. Please be informed that the string class. equals method is meant for content comparison inheritance concept okay don't need to think much about this. this is inheritance concept so if you don't like the behavior you can have your own behavior by overriding it so string is having its own behavior okay, for content comparison if you like the behavior of the parent class if you like one of the behaviors that is there in the parent class you don't override it you just you, you just use it okay. the equals method is from the object class object class is not overwritten so is this method is for reference comparison Done. Popular interview questions you have discussed. Okay, they give you this piece of code and uh, you need to explain them what is the output after this explanation. They will ask you the follow up question, right? So, how many questions are covered here? Difference between string glass and string buffer, right? And uh, output of this code. And we also got to know what is the purpose of equal equals method with respect to string class and the purpose of equals method with respect to string buffer class. That's it. Okay, we will see now we will see the case studies. Okay, now uh, the example two. Okay, this will be very very interesting. Uh, I think uh, Samikta was not there yesterday. Okay, Samikta, you focus here. You will understand this. These are very easy. From here, you will understand this. What is this object creation law? Okay. So the question could be: They will give you this piece of code, right? They will give you the piece of code. Okay, and they will ask you. Okay, if if I am taking an interview, I will. I am going to ask you all: How many objects are getting created in the memory? This is my question. Okay. 
and you share the screen when you are uh, you know giving an interview with me uh, my question would be this and i will ask you what is the output of this following program not output uh, what is the output as well as how many objects are created behind this scene many objects are created and six and what is the output So no worries, very easy. Let me copy this. Let me use the plain screen. Okay, we will discuss this. We will discuss this. See how Java is designed internally, especially the string. What are the things that are that is going to happen behind the scenes? We will understand this from this example. We focus here. So in which class you are dealing now? We are dealing with string class. Blindly, whenever you are dealing with a string class, okay, separate to imagine that there are two memory areas. Okay, the one memory area is what heap area, and the second one, the second popular memory area is SCP, which is for string constant pool. Right? You have two memory areas. One is for heap, and one is for SCP. This this works only for the string class. So you are dealing with what? You are dealing with the string class. Right? Now, now the question. Okay, first line. Always remember when you are creating an object by using the string class. Okay, whenever you are creating an object by using the string class, you need to remember two things. Okay, so one and two. First thing, for the new keyword, an object will be created in the heap area, right? And uh, the value Java will be placed inside this object. And the reference variable S one will be assigned to this object. Okay. Then, so first part is I mean I uh, you know the heap area is completed. Now SCP area. You need to also understand what SCP area. And again in the SCP area for the future reference. Okay. Just try to understand this guys. You are passing the literal inside the constructor. So this part is called as constructor, or you are passing a string literal inside the parenthesis, right? So whenever you are passing a string literal as a separate argument, okay, especially for the string, and memory will be created in the SCP area also for the reusability, and it is going to store the same Java itself. So this is the part. Two. Part one is for heap area. Part two is for SCP area. But please remember, reference will be given only for the heap area. Okay, done. First line is done. Okay. Now let us understand about this second line. Okay. What you are doing with the second line? Okay. You are doing. You are using a method called concat method, and you are passing again a string literal, which is called as programming. Yes or no? You are using a concat method and you are passing what programming. So what will happen behind the scenes? Okay, this changes. Okay, S one is here. The changes will not happen inside the S one because string classes are immutable in nature. You cannot create the changes in the existing object. Instead of that, because of the immutability, a new object will be created, right? And you are concatenating what? You are concatenating S one. The value inside the S one is Java. That Java is getting concatenated with the another literal, which is what programming, right? So there will be a new object created, and Java programming will be stored inside this new object. As simple as that, right? And remember, okay. And again, you are here. You are passing a literal, okay, in double parentheses. In double parentheses, you are doing what? You are passing a literal programming. Okay, for every literal, an object will be created in the SCP area, right? And here it is going to be what programming for the future reference, right? So this is also completed. Now third line. Okay, now third line. Third line is what? There are two areas here, okay? Because you are using the assignment operator, so there is the right hand side part and left hand side part. Try to focus on the right hand side part. Okay, again you are doing what? S one, S one is this is S one. The value inside the S one is Java is getting concatenated with the language, right? So create a new object, right? And do what? 
Java language. Java language. And what you are doing, you are, you are assigning this, you are assigning this object to the same reference variable of what? S1. Okay, S1 is already pointing to a different object. Now you are reassigning it to, reassigning, you know, this object to the S1 itself. Please focus here. Reassigning the output of this object to the S1 itself. Okay, what you are doing, you are literally pulling this S1 from here to here and you are giving it a new reference. Right? And again, remember this, okay? This is the literal. Okay, you are passing language inside a parenthesis. Inside a parenthesis, okay? For that, and again, an object will be created in the uh, EAP area. And uh, this is going to be what? Language. Right? So, what is the actual question? What is my actual question? My actual question is, how many objects are created behind the scenes? Okay? Can I say that there are six objects created? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So, answer is six objects. So, to be specific, I can say that three objects in EAP area and the three objects in SAP. Three objects in SAP. Three objects in SAP area. Okay, totally six objects. What is the second question? What is the output of this following code? What is the output? I want to print the value inside the S1. Let me run this. What we are getting here? We are getting Java language. Why we are getting the Java language here? Because we are printing S1. S1 is pointing to which object? S1 is pointing to this object. Okay, what is the value inside this object? Java language. Java language will be displayed in the console. As simple as that. Java language. Right? After this, what will happen? After doing all this, the, the objects that has no references. How many objects has no references here? How many object has no references? So this object has no reference. So this will be eligible for garbage collection. This object has no reference. This will be eligible for garbage collection. This object has no reference. This will be eligible for garbage. No, no, no. Okay. The SCP area will never be eligible for garbage collection. Only the objects that are in the EAP area will get eligible for the garbage collection. Okay. This will be taken inter care internally by the Java program. It will not be touched. Garbage collection is nothing. Uh, the memory gets uh, unallocated that's it because it has no references this will not get eligible for garbage collection because it has a reference here it has an identity here getting this you are i know that you are going you are you know you will be gaining knowledge slowly i think you have understood 10 percent of this you will see one more example for the better understanding okay. now so we got to know how uh, this particular program is working let me remove this i want to introduce another example stay focused here you will get much clarity in this example so this is example number three okay. and example number three okay if i print s1 and s2 what will be the values that will be displayed in the console this could be your interview question okay. question looks very uh, you know simple but uh, behind the scenes uh, you know there will be little tricky Okay, you need to pay much attention for this question, right? So let me uh, place this in the paint screen. File, new. Okay, focus here, guys. This is our actual question. What is the output of this following program? This could be your interview question also. Okay, you must take pen and paper to identify the output. If you want, you can visualize this, but uh, you know in the beginning it will be a little difficult to visualize this okay so for the string always remember when you are dealing with string class objects so you need to consider two memory areas behind the scenes case what is the first memory area EAP area we have what is the second memory area we have SCP area we have there is an EAP area there is an SCP SCP stands for string constant support it was there till java 1.6 from 1.7 the string constant pool is part of EAP area we will discuss about that later in the garbage collection topic Okay. We have EAP area, we have SAP area. So first line, first piece of code, first line of code. Okay. And you are using a new keyword. Okay. You are using a new keyword. Right. And okay, two things happens behind the scenes because of this new keyword. One is in the EAP area. Right. In the EAP area, new keyword is creating an object in the EAP area. And what you are trying to store in this object, the value string. 
and what is the reference variable what is the reference variable reference variable is what s1 okay and for the future purpose an object will be created in the scp area also right and uh, spring so here there will be no reference internally jvm will create a reference for this don't worry about this reference blindly understand that so this constructor okay it will consider this as a an literal again Okay. and for this it will create a copy of an object in the scp area why it is creating for the future purpose what is that future purpose we will understand that shortly okay so this line is done okay second line focus here second line s1 dot concat for s1 dot concat for so what is the value inside the s1 guys spring is the value inside the s1 s1 okay so this concatenation will not happen in the same same object will not happen because string is immutable so a new object will be created okay what we want to concatenate we want to concatenate the value of s1 which is spring with fall concatenation both are you know both values are getting uh, getting uh, going together addition of two values spring plus fall becomes spring fall right is there any reference variable for this concatenation has happened in the new object okay and uh, the value spring and value fall got concatenated be to become spring fall right and in the runtime okay this particular thing okay you are passing a string literal for in the parenthesis so for this an object will be created for the reusability in the scp area okay i think we are good so far only two more lines and now this time Okay, again two operations and here uh, you know uh, forget about these two operations so here you have an assignment operator so there are two parts here uh, right hand side as well as the uh, left hand side first we will concentrate on the right hand side so what we are saying s1 dot concat winter s1 is what s1 as a value of what spring right so every time a new object will be created okay it will take the value spring from the s1 which is going to get concatenated with the value what winter right done after this what you are doing do uh, what you are doing you are assigning s2 to this newly created object so left hand side left hand side see assignment you are doing assignment means assigning the object with an reference variable which is s2 here right and because of this literal because of this literal an object will be created in the e area for the future purpose which is printer right and the last piece of code so this is the last piece of code so you are doing what uh, you are again doing a concat operation on top of s2 reference variable s2 reference variable is this right so what is the value inside s2 what is the value inside this 2 spring winter right so a new object will be created every time a new object will be created because string will not uh, string is immutable in nature so spring winter plus you are doing what okay, this spring s2 is spring winter the spring winter value is getting concatenated with the value some so the, this becomes spring, spring winter and summer okay there is no reference variable because you are directly doing this in the runtime so no reference variable is there to be assigned right and for this uh, literal okay for this summer summer is again a literal in, inside the enclosed inside the parenthesis for the future purpose a new object will be created in the scp area and this is going to be what summer right and what is the output that we are expecting okay now if you see you want to print the value inside s1 you want to print the value inside s2 what is the value inside s1 spring is the value inside the s1 isn't it so spring will be displayed in the console so what is the value inside s2 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 is holding spring winter the spring and the spring winter is going to get displayed in the console right so are we getting the same thing so spring spring winter right and how many objects are created totally okay, eight objects are created okay four objects are there in the heap area 
and another four objects are there in the SAP area. Okay, and these three objects, okay, the objects without any references will be eligible for garbage collection. Only in the EAP area, the objects without any reference will be eligible for garbage collection. In the SAP area, it will not happen because internally JVM will give an internal references to all these objects. JVM will maintain some addresses to all these objects which we cannot see actually, which we cannot guess. So that's why these are not eligible for garbage collection. Internally, JVM will take care of this. Okay, when I say something is eligible for garbage collection, especially in Java, if it has no references, okay, if the object is getting created ideally by blindly behind the scenes without any references, after the conclusion, these objects will be eligible for garbage collection. They will be uh, discarded, I can say. Okay, so I think you have got some 30 percentage of uh, what is uh, you know, string manipulations, okay, and let us see the last piece of example. All your questions will be answered. If you practice these four examples, you can answer any interview questions on Java on top of string manipulations, especially this kind of questions I am talking about. Okay, the last question. You will understand this line by line guys. So this is very big question. Okay, so I want you to focus here. Line by line, we will understand. Okay, everything is a string object. Okay, there are two areas always remember for the string class there are two areas one is what one is the uh, EAP area second one is SCP area okay now look at this first line an object creation because of this new keyword what will happen behind the scenes so I don't think you need much explanation for this what what is the, the thing that is going to happen behind the scenes because of the new keyword Right, an object will be created in the EAP area. Yes or no? An object gets created in the EAP area, and here you are going to have what I cannot be modified. I can't be modified. Let me decrease this size, or else I can write it like I can't be modified. ICBM. Shortcut I am writing. Okay, and uh, this is going to be what S1. Focus here, guys. Focus here. This is very interesting. Okay. And uh, for the future purpose, because of the string literal, because of this string literal, future purpose, an object will also be created in the SCP area. Okay, this is going to be what ICP. I cannot be modified. ICP. Okay, first line is completed. Right, and the second line. What is the second line? You are again creating an object by using the new keyword and the same uh, literally you are passing it inside the constructor. Okay, so same thing will happen. New object will be created and this is going to be what? ICBM. Right, and this reference variable is ICBM means I cannot be modified. The reference variable is what? S2 here. Right. And because of this uh, literal, because of this literal, an object will be created in the SCP area. But please remember, already there is an object in the SCP area of I cannot be modified. If already one copy is there with the same value, no second copy will be created. Okay, it will utilize the existing copy. Are you getting this? Object creation is mandatory only in the EAP area, guys. Okay, in the SCP, when it comes to SCP, first it will check is there any object with the same value. Yes, there is already an object with the same value. ICBM is already there. I cannot be modified. It's already there. So second time, it will not do this once again. For the same object values, it will not. It will never do this because this is a concept of reusability. It will utilize the existing object itself. So this will not happen, right? And what is the uh, thing I want to display? I want to compare S1 double equal to S2. S1 double equal to S2. Okay, both are pointing to different references, right? The output has to be false. Okay, let us try to uh, run code till here. Okay, those are the keywords I use in YouTube. Don't worry about that. Okay, this is my question. I cannot be modified. I cannot be modified. If I run this code, I should be getting false as the console because S1 and S2 is using double equal to operator, which is meant for reference combination. You look at this code, both are pointing to a different references. 
both are pointing to different different objects so it is false right so we got output as false okay so now now you see now you focus now you are using a string literal directly directly so you are assigning the value i cannot be modified to the s3 variable when you are assigning a string literal directly to a reference variable directly to a reference variable you are not using any parenthesis here so this uh, this is not enclosed with any parenthesis okay this is a direct literal okay for every direct literal okay it will just try to create an object in the scp area it will never think about creating an object in the eep area i have told this things to you already in the extra days class so direct literal i cannot be modified i cannot be modified is already there in the scp area right it will utilize that but what is the reference variable that you are giving it here s3 is a reference variable so this is going to be what s3 that is the only difference now you are giving the reference variable to here because this is the literal and this literal has to be stored in the scp area only right scp area there is already an object called i cannot be this is a shortcut guys i am using icbm so that i can reduce uh, you know everything will be fit okay don't think what is icbm i cannot be modified I'm just using the shortcut okay now what i am trying to do here the fourth line uh, system dot order print and sc is getting compared double equal to s uh, one is getting compared with s3 by using double equal to operator again both are pointing to the different references so output has to be false again right these two lines let me write it here for the time saving okay, this has to give me what false again false 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 we got right so we are done with these four lines let me remove these four lines okay now now focus here again s4 okay you are using a reference variable s4 and you are directly assigning a literal to the reference variable s4 whenever a literal uh, is getting assigned directly to a reference variable always think about the scp area okay don't think about the heap area because this is a direct literal without using any kind of new keyword and you are using you are assigning a direct literal to the reference variable s4 okay so in the s4 already there is a value and i cannot be modified so that will be reused once again okay this is going to have what s4 because s4 is the value i mean reference variable that is getting assigned for this letter right after this what you are doing you are comparing s3 double equal to s4 focus here s3 is getting compared with s4 by using the double equal to operator okay so both s3 and both s4 they are pointing to the same object they are pointing to the same object now this time the output has to be what output has to be true okay so let me copy this piece of code let me paste it here okay s3 double equal to s4 this time the output has to be what true because both are pointing to the same references okay both if you see both are pointing to the same object okay or else i can say that this uh, you know both uh, reference variables is pointing to one object okay so this is also done let me remove this now let let us bring this up now you focus your much attention is required in this okay if you see i am using a plus operator here don't you think so i am using a plus operator right before this plus operator there is a literal called i cannot and after this there is literal called modified so both can be treated as constants so this is one constant and then is this is another constants this con in java guys this constants are always taken care by the compiler compiler we see it like a separate entities okay we see it like separate things both are separated by the plus operator we see it like that how java sees you know every constant for example if you want to add two numbers in, in java for example if you want to add system dot out dot print ln you want to add under 10 plus 10 okay. this 10 is a constant and this 10 is also a constant direct values right so you see it as 10 plus 10 but java does not see like that java see it as 20 so this is our view this is our view java has a different way because all these constants are taken care of by the compiler so java will be seeing it like i don't see 10 plus 10 i see only 20. so the the uh you know what we call it as uh, the actual computation will happen in the compile time only 
like this only if you see this you are seeing it as i cannot plus b modified but how java will see both are constants right java will be seeing it as a one word right i can't be modified because these things gets evaluated during the compile time only i have we have discussed this thing already in the core java concept compile time computation right again the i cannot be modified is assigned to which reference variable s5 reference variable means a, a literal is directly getting assigned to the reference variable so scp will come into the picture right in the scp there is already i cannot be modified so that will be utilized for the reusable purpose for s5 also so now we want to do what after this you want to do what you want to do s4 double equal to s5 s4 double equal to s5 you are using double equal to operator for the comparison so where is s4 s4 is here where is s5 s5 is here both are pointing to the same reference if both are pointing to the same reference the output has to be true again yes or no right let me copy this code now let me paste it here the last uh, output has to be what true this time see you are getting true right slowly we will understand okay. and uh, we have completed this part also let me remove this so that we can observe we can visualize the remaining uh, problem cases in a better way okay. now the sixth case okay. now you see guys now you see okay you are assigning i cannot i cannot i cannot is a literal is a literal directly getting assigned to a reference variable s6 first it will check is there any content like only i cannot this is not that this content is what i cannot be modified okay there is no such content like i cannot okay an object will be created with the content what i cannot okay and this is going to have the reference variable as what s6 focus here s6 okay always remember for every string letter okay if you're having something like string s equal to a b c okay when you are assigning a value directly to a string value directly to a string all these uh, operations will happen in the scp area okay, that's why i'm talking about scp area. but no if you want to do like this string s equal to new string a b c you are doing like this one part of the thing will happen in up, you know, will get happen in heap area and the second part will happen in scp area okay but when you are encountering situation like this all these things will happen in the scp area okay so this part is also done i cannot as uh, given created an object in the scp area so we can remove this now view focus keep give some special attention to this code give some special attention to this code okay previously there are two constants but this time this is not a constant this is variable this is a variable because this variable is again holding a value i cannot inside are you getting this if you have a variable plus constant if you have a variable plus constants variable plus constant if you have the things like this this operation will always happen in the run time please remember if both are constants if both are constants this always happen in the compile time compilation time if both are constants compiler will come into the picture and this operation will happen in the compilation time okay if one if at least one of the uh you know one of the values is a variable that that will always happen in the runtime runtime compilation time if both are constants compilation time if there is one variable that will happen in the what time that will happen in the exactly in the runtime right so what we are trying to do you are you are uh, depending upon another variable called s6 here so s6 is here right and i cannot is getting concatenated with b modified b modified so this is a b modified so what i just said one variable plus one constants so runtime operation for every runtime operation definitely there will be an object created in the heap area for the runtime operation so in the heap area okay you are going to have what i can't 
be modified. I'm just keeping it simple because I cannot type everything, right? So I am using I cannot be modified. And this is going to be what? S6. No, sorry, S7. Right? And specifically, B modified is a constant. Now, for this constant, I memory gets allocated in the SCP area, and this is going to be what B modified. Okay, now you are doing what? You are trying to compare S4 with S7. Where is S4? Identify where is S4. S4 is here. Where is S7? S7 is here. Okay, I want to check if F S4 and S7 are. Uh, I want to check the equality. So both are pointing to different objects, right? So I should be getting the output as false. Let me copy these three lines of code. S4 and S7, I should be getting the output as false by getting false. Okay, so this is how you deal with the uh, you know the constant and the variable. If at least there is one variable, it will be treated as a runtime operation. For every runtime operation, you must there must there will be an object created after performing the modification. There, must, there will be an object created in the heap area, and the reference variable will, will be given to the heap area. Right, and for every constant, there will be a uh, you know space allocated in the SCP area. So you are keeping this here in the SCP. B modified is placed here. Okay, now this last one. Last one. If you get locked out of the meeting, please raise your hand. This is the last statement of here. With final string S set, I cannot followed by. Do you remember, guys? In the core Java concept, I was telling you whenever you are assigning the whenever you are using the final keyword to a particular data type okay, that will be treated always treated as a constant okay, even though you assign i cannot this i cannot is assigned to the reference variable sc8 which is of final type final means all the final keywords are constants final in java is what constant yes or no final in java is always constant right and even though you pass S8 here, okay, this S8 is holding a constant because of this final keyword. S8 is part of constant. S8 is part of a final keyword, which is a constant, right? So this both will be treated as constants only. Constant plus constant is going to be given as what it will be what a constant only. So what is the value that you're going to get finally? I cannot be modified is a constant. That constant will have its space in the SCP area. Already there. Already there is an object called I cannot be modified, and this is going to be used. This object will be is this object is going to be reused by this reference variable, which is S9. Right? And after this, what you are trying to do? S4 double equal to S9. Okay, S4 is getting compared with S9. Both are pointing to the same object ICBM, which means it has to return what? True. Right? Is it running really returning true? Let us see. So, right. So this is how the program is. This is how the program is. Okay. This all all these case studies. You do one thing. Take pen and paper. Okay, and do all these things by your side. Okay, after practicing three to four set of problems, you will be getting this for sure. So this is how the string uh, class will work internally. Okay, so we are trying to understand how, how, what are the things that are going to happen behind the scenes. In the real-time example, you might not be giving much importance to this uh, in the real-time application, developing applications. Okay, from the interview point of view, what is happening behind the scenes? That we need to understand it, or else uh, learning Java will be what it can. You can just uh, read this. This is not required. If you want to know about string, okay, this theory is enough. This is more than uh, enough. Okay, but if you want to understand what is happening exactly happening behind the scenes, you need to practice all these programs which I have just given. Okay, do that, you will get uh, some confidence and you can answer these questions that are on top of string class and string buffer classes. Right? So, tomorrow we will try to see what? Okay, this is all of string. Okay, we'll try to see why SCP is there for string and not for string buffer.
okay we will understand this uh, question tomorrow okay for today i think we can wind up for the day if you have any questions for